So in today's Creative Confidence Catch-Up, I'm going to be chatting with Lynn. So Lynn, would you like to tell us a bit about yourself? Sure. It's, thanks for having me, Amy. Um, it's nice to chat across the pond, and we actually figured out the time. <laughs> so this is great. Um, I'm a technical writer by trade. I've been working for a couple decades in that field in IT, but I've always been a creative writer too. So um, I think that's why our mutual friend tagged me to talk to you because yeah. I never stopped writing creatively and I write poetry and I write, um, I had a blog for four years mm -hmm. and I write, I have like 60 something articles on Medium. Wow. And lately I've gotten back into poetry and I've done some open mics and that has been so rewarding because I do love it and you know you forget sometimes what you love mm -hmm. and I got back to it and I have like three businesses now that I'm starting up mm -hmm. I'm building a course on tech writing I started a communications firm with my son so we do like website design and we help um, especially small businesses because they don't mm -hmm. have time or energy to do those kinds of things so we help them with SEO and social media. That's really fun. And I'm also publishing like a, an ebook. I'm going to be publishing a version of, I love fairy tales. So I'm going to be publishing a version of um, East of the Sun and West of the Moon. So I'm kind of busy. Yeah, that's so cool. It's really great just to kind of um, rounding up like what it is that you are currently working on, what you have been doing and stuff. But my first question to you today is, how would you define your creative confidence in what you do? Do you feel that it's like really prominent and like you're really confident in, in what it is that you're doing? Or have, have you felt like in the past that you haven't been so confident and it kind of grew over time? That's a really good question. I also have a podcast called The Storied Human, mm -hmm. and I don't know why I started it. It was just one of those instincts one day. It just sounded like amazing to me. And I said, oh, I should try that, which doesn't make any sense. I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's yeah. like oh, yeah, let's have a broadcast show and get on and get a mic and talk to people. But there was something about it that excited me. But But I was really nervous and I didn't feel creative and I didn't feel like I could do it. And I grew into myself on the podcast. So with writing, I'm always, I, I don't want to say always confident, but you know, I'm older. So I've done a lot of writing over the years. I'm confident that the writing will come. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Like yeah. when I sit down with a, a flash of inspiration or an idea, I'm confident that something wants to come out. Yes. It's almost like, I really do believe that muse thing and channeling. It's almost mm -hmm. like I'm channeling something. Mm -hmm. So I do have confidence in that. I don't have confidence in anyone else will like it. <laughs> Sometimes that's, you, not everybody's cup of tea, but that's, that's life, isn't it? In general. <laughs> and you can't care too much about that. Mm -hmm. And I remember one time showing a poem to my cousin and I was really proud of it. I'm still proud of it. It was really cool. And she loved it. And mm -hmm. she said, um, Oh, you should publish this blah, 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 blah. And that's the day I realized that's not why I wrote poetry. Because I said, oh, yeah. no, it's not it's not to publish. It's for me mm -hmm. and for people that I'm close to. And it's just it's sort of the it's such a private thing. You know, mm -hmm. that's why I did an open mic recently. And that was like terrifying. <laughs> I do know. I don't know how people do. And do you know when people kind of come up with these poems that are like on the spot and things like Ooh, that? And that's like, even crazier. Oh. Right. They're amazing. People like that. Any kind of improv amazes me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know, it was so great, Amy, I forgot because I spent so much time raising children and I was really into mm -hmm. that, you know, and I, I took a little time off work. And so I was just such a mom yeah. for a while there that I forgot. There's a whole group of people that love to hear what you wrote, a whole group of supportive poets out there. And when I went to this open mic, it was almost like we had all met in a dream and said, let's go on Friday and, and and read to each other because I say met in a dream because the imagery in our poetry was so similar. I love we that. were freaking out. We were all noticing it and we were so close. We felt so close and we didn't know each other. Wow. And I said, oh, you must have gotten the memo. And they laughed yeah. and they said, that's right. You were supposed to be here and I was supposed to be here. And so there's something magical about that, about mm -hmm. connecting on that level. And I just felt so, I wasn't scared anymore. You know, I just felt so happy to be with those people. And my husband was in the audience and he said, I would love to be with these people. I would love to go out with them and see them. So there, we forgot that there were those wonderful poetry type people out there, you know, artists of any kind, actually. And it was in an art museum, which was even more special. 
Mm -hmm. we were surrounded by art, local art museum. And I just thought, okay, I forgot about this part of myself. I forgot about these people. I love this too much. I just loved it. And the reception for my poems was pretty great. And I, it wasn't um, something I was even expecting. I just had this, again, I don't know why I did it. I just had this urge. I saw there was a poetry open mic and I said, well, I should do that. And I'm like, but wait a minute. You know, like I was like thinking I was so scared. And I said, no, no, you should do this. It was like a push, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I trust those pushes. Mm. And so I went and it was like perfect timing and the perfect, when I say our imagery was similar, it was, we had a lot of nature imagery. We were all kind of obsessed with nature and it almost seemed like we knew each other and had set up like a nature poetry reading wow. <laughs> and it was kind of one of those magical nights and the person who set it up is um you know a, a pretty well-known poet and she is very generous with supporting other poets and she even said your poems are speaking to each other wow. so that was lovely that was really lovely. That's so cool. But do you know what I like about this, right? Where you talk about like family life and how um, in terms of creativity, not kind of embracing that at the beginning because obviously you're too focused on like the family and which obviously, yeah, by all means, that's like, yeah, your responsibilities come first and stuff. But you know what I like? That idea that you then find a community who have a common ground and then through that, that sort of creativity starts to manifest itself. I love that. It's so lovely. It's like, it's always there. Don't you feel like that, Amy? I feel like yeah, that's yeah. sort of what you're, you're plumbing the depths of something that we all yeah. share. That's always there. Mm -hmm. And, and let me just shout out to the moms that are home or mom, you know, moms that are working or whatever. That was very creative for me. That was like another way to be creative. Mm -hmm. um, being around little minds that say the funniest things and learn things. And, you know, just, that was super creative, but that was different, right? This, mm -hmm. I just forgot about these these literary poetry people. And I just, I think we forget who we are sometimes, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. because none of my friends write poetry. They love that I do, you know, they're very supportive. Well, one of my friends does, but so I can't get that from them, mm -hmm. you know? So you have to find your people yeah. for each part of your life. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot that I was one of those people. And my one friend chastised me. She, I said, well, I'm a poet. Well, not really, but I've been writing again. And she's like, no, you're a poet. Say it. Mm. It's like, and it's okay a, it's affirming that isn't it because you can it. it's like that imposter syndrome coming out where it's like oh but they are and this is what they do but and then I it's just like do a little imposter. bit yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 and you know I have to shout out for myself because I am I picked up some things and read them from years ago when I was in college and after did you ever do this like you you find a piece that you painted or created or you found a piece that you wrote and you're mm -hmm. like this is pretty good <laughs> yeah like you, you have some I distance and time <laughs> <laughs> you you almost forget that yeah I do have this talent and you see it yeah. objectively for a second that happened to me and I also I won an award in college for my poem wow. that's when I first knew that maybe I was a poet even okay. though I wrote I wrote see this is the thing I don't know why I doubt myself at all because I always wrote poems I wrote poems when I was a little girl I wrote poems before anyone told me to I just you know I wrote my first poem when I was six years old and I was so fortunate. I had parents who thought that was amazing mm, and encouraged really it. So, yeah. yeah. And it is, so that's, it's celebrating all those little things, isn't it? Because so often we can kind of go, oh, that's not really important. But all those little things are so important because if we don't celebrate ourselves, nobody is going to celebrate with us when we think we can achieve something. It's so true. And, and also I love the idea of just not, not, trying to publish it or not trying to do this or that not defining where it has to go yeah I that's like that. that's a mm. lovely feeling and just saying well I mean I heard they're going to have another open mic in the spring Ooh, at the exciting. same art museum so I'm trying to pick some pieces for that and that'll be fun I'll see my my peeps again <laughs> but I'm not I'm not thinking it has to go anywhere yes and mm -hmm. to me that's such a lovely after working like in the corporate world and it always has to go somewhere and there's always mm. control and there's always a goal. I've reached a point in my life where I'm, I've learned to let go and let things grow organically and oh, let wow. things just be, just let things be wonderful and fun and not think, Oh, I've got to control this and make this into a success. That's just lovely to let go of that. Mm -hmm. And this, the podcast taught me that because I haven't, um, 
I haven't, it's grown steadily and it's lovely and I really enjoy it. It's the first thing I've ever done where I've really let it grow organically. Oh, well, no, that's so cool. And I'm a control freak. So it's really kind of an amazing step forward. Yeah. And that's the thing. Little, like bigger things go from these, what you think, oh yeah, it's just a little seed. It's not going to happen. But the more you nurture it, yeah. the more it keeps going and going and it becomes right. something eventually. That's so lovely to think of it that way, yeah. like a seed. And yeah. What I love is it's going to go the way it wants to go and I'm going to follow it. That's oh. it's the first time I've ever felt like this. I'm following it. Yeah. And I, I don't want to get too woo woo, but what's happened is I have about 70, I think 70 episodes now. Wow. And so I've been doing it for two years and I can't, when I say that, I can't believe it, but it, you know, it mounts up, right. It just mm. little by little. Right. Really and, good. and what's happened is I'm attracting a certain kind of person. Mm-hmm. Yes. Without even trying, like I'm the way I talk about it, the way I feel about it, um, what people hear when I describe it, I'm getting people that are really fascinating, kind of spiritually oriented people who have really neat stories. So I, I was worried about finding people to interview, but it's sort of happening. Like I am on a Facebook group and I do ask people, but I'm noticing I'm getting people just kind of drawn to it and they look at course they look at the body of work and they go oh I'd fit in with this so it mm. it's its own if I could say anything to people who are younger and wondering what to do or how much to control things excuse me I would say try to let it go and see try to have it tell you where it wants to go yeah because that has been so wonderful just let it tell you yeah because you can you can force things in a certain direction can't you and then that just pushes you off track you just said a mouthful. That was me. I was like, oh, well, I've got to do something. And I would force things. And I would, yeah. I think I, it wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> so for the podcast then, um, what sort of, in terms of like the community then, how would you describe your community and what's it all about? Good question. Um, from the beginning, I just wanted to hear people's stories because I know everyone has one and I've run yeah. up against people that say, well, I don't have a story. Yeah, and I find like, that a lot. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, you do. You know, mm. you, you don't think you do, but you do. Yeah. And so it's been people willing. I mean, the first year, because I'm older, I know a lot of people. The first year was everyone I knew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I just interviewed everybody I knew. But even that fell into certain categories, yeah. like uh, people who were entrepreneurs. I love to talk to entrepreneurs mm -hmm. because they usually have overcome some really significant challenges and we can learn a lot from them. So true. Even just not about business, but about life, you mm -hmm. know, how to attack a certain challenge, how to get through it, persistence. I just love to hear their stories. So that's one theme that sort of runs through. Mm -hmm. And then I... I have a special interest in mental health. So I talk to people about recovery, addiction, mental health. Oh, wow. um, yeah. My grandmother was in a mental hospital. My mother mm -hmm. had a tough childhood. And so for me, it's always close to my heart. And I mm -hmm. want people to talk about it and take the stigma out. And I love, I think it's very inspiring because that's another thing. You never know who's listening, right? It yeah. could really inspire somebody to to um, to go to a therapist or get help or that they're going to feel better because this person felt better. So I like that, too. So there's like that running through the mental health yeah. thing. There's entrepreneurs and then there's the spiritual coaches and life coaches, which I can't get enough of them. They're so they're so inspirational and they have so much wisdom to share. And they sometimes you just need to think of something a little differently mm -hmm. or you need like maybe a framework yeah. to to for your life and I you know what it is I just am endlessly curious about people I I find everyone fascinating even if they don't find themselves fascinating I find them find because something. I just think human beings are interesting mm -hmm. and so that's sort of you know the very general approach that the storied human has it's just lots of wonderful stories mm -hmm all these little insights and stuff and that's the thing that everybody is gonna have even though they might have a similar story it right. will tangent off somewhere right mm -hmm. and that's so fun and people you, you ever notice when you talk when someone asks you questions and you're talking you don't even realize what you thought about something like you <laughs> thought you knew what you thought but you start saying something you didn't really know like that's how writing is for me too like I'll start writing about something yeah. I'll start writing about a and I'm like oh there's b oh my goodness and I'll just keep writing you think in a different way when you're being creative, I think, you know, when you're writing or you're painting or you're producing art, 
um, I think when someone asks you a question, you're really thinking about it. You just think in a different way when you're talking to someone else rather yeah. than, rather than just sitting around talking to yourself. And when you write, it's like talking to yourself, hmm. telling hmm. yourself a story. I read somewhere when you write, it's like telling yourself a story. <laughs> it, is, it, is, and when, it is. And when you read, it's the same thing. That's why reading is so much better for you than watching TV hmm. because you're telling yourself a story and using your own imagination as the TV screen. And what, you know, when you're watching TV, it's a different brainwave. You're very passive and you're letting the, the entertainment and information come in. But when you're reading a book, it's your movie, you know, you're making the pictures in your head. So it's, it's much more engaging. Mm. So yeah. when it comes to like your creative, like the way that you write a um, article, whether you are writing a poem or whatever it is, do you find that then it kind of, you write it all at once or do you write it over time where it is just fragments and bits and pieces and then it just all accumulates into one? That's a good question. I think it's both. Mm. Some things come in a rush. Like I said, like I'm almost channeling them. Like they've yeah. been sitting there wanting to be written. Um, and then I'll edit them later, but yeah, they'll come almost whole, mm -hmm. especially poems. Poems are really fun because I'll get the first two lines of a poem. Mm -hmm or the first line, I'll just get words in my head and I have to write them down and I'll follow, I've learned to follow them, you know, and then, and then I'll scribble and keep writing and editing, but it's almost all there. So for an article though, it's more like pieces. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll write a piece, I'll go away, I'll come back, I'll be like, eh, you know, like <laughs> I'll judge later. And so, yeah, I think it's both. And I think it's really interesting how people create. And I had a theory of writing course a long time ago and it, it saved my life because I don't know how it is at in school for you guys, but when I was in school, we were often given essay tests where you have to take a little booklet and there's a question and you have to write and edit at the same time for the test. Ah, okay. And then you hand in this written booklet in 50 minutes, you know? Mm -hmm. And when I took the theory of writing, it said that when you write, it's really two, two separate processes when you write anything, right? Mm -hmm you're creating, which is natural, you know, it flows out of you and you should just learn to let that go. And then later editing is on, is totally separate. You shouldn't do it at the same time. And it's cultural. Editing is cultural. It's like, you're adding it as an after, after process. And depending on what that writing is for, the editing will be really specific. So mm -hmm. you've created this gush of stuff, right? But if it's a marketing piece, you're going to have to edit it so it sounds like marketing. Yeah. Or get you. if it's a poem, you know, you got to make mm. it more poetic. Or if it's a, a personal essay, it, you got to edit it. So in separating those two things, it helps people who have writer's block. Mm -hmm. Because I used to do, um, I used to tutor writers in the writing center at college. And we would have these sometimes science majors, you know, people who were really not into writing and they would be completely blocked. They'd have to write a paper and they could not start. Mm -hmm. We would do free writing, which I think a lot of people do use where you just write like crazy for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And even if all you can write is, I don't know what to write. You just write that. And you don't take your pen off the paper. You just keep writing. I write. And that sort of frees you up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the whole idea is like, you have to remember that creating is thinking on paper. Writing is thinking on paper. There's no mystery. Yeah but that's separate from editing. That's so, so interesting just... because that, that reminds me of like what I talk about a lot is creative constraints. And I'm sure that you've seen pretty much a lot of all these posts that I talk about, but yeah, that yeah. for me is a, creative no, I love when you talk about that. Helps. Yeah. Yeah. Just being able to kind of channel something in at like a certain amount of time or like yeah. in a certain medium that reminds me of that. And then even then you could put a time limit on that, couldn't you? It's like, what can I make yeah. in this time? And yeah. I just love that. I think it's so cool to play with all those things that you talk about. I yeah, think yeah. that's so neat. And, and I also want to say here and now that everyone is creative. Everyone Really I are. just, I see people that really segment it like, oh, Lynn is creative and I'm not. No, you are creative. Everyone is creative. Everybody is a creator of some sort. It's just the, they are. Um, I was saying in a previous um, podcast where we were talking about this idea of creativity and what it means to people. And a lot of the time they will see themselves as a painter or an artist. And it's like, that's not just creative. It's like this whole lot more. It's just <laughs> yeah. a stereotypical view. <laughs> that's so true but we're taught those you know we're taught to 
yeah. segment things. It's mm. so true. Yeah. Creativity is really the way you think. Yeah. It's and everyone different. can bring it out. Everyone can bring that out. Um, I remember reading just, I'm going to probably kill it, like not say it right, but there was a beautiful definition of creativity. I read that it said you creativity is the ability to see similarities in two seemingly un, unsimilar things, like mm-hmm. to find those connections. And I think you're, yeah. you talk about that a lot. Like yeah. you, you get that. And mm-hmm. I think that if we had more of that, we would have more in- innovation and people would be more free to, it's like a muscle, I think too. Like if you, oh, the yeah. more you do that, right. Mm-hmm. The, the more creative you get. And so yeah, let's get some more creativity going. <laughs> rather than <laughs> rather than having to be fit in a box and do you know what I call exactly. this? Exactly. Sort of, um, exactly. A, a, a academic sort of a realm. It's more about like it's got to be a tick box exercise that everyone fits into. And not everybody fits into that box. And then that yeah. stifles their creativity and then it makes them procrastinate basically and they'll never be creative. So it's sad, really. So how did you get obsessed with this? I love how obsessed you are with it and how you're exploring it. How did you, how did you start, you know, really delving into creativity? So I think what it would, would have been is I went to uni and it was, we were questioning the idea of what if all the time. And for me, it is the power of what if, and that is what spurs me to become well it it spurred me to become more mindful because I then started to look into sustainability and I didn't realize at the the, this time I was looking into like wasted materials but questioning what if I do this what if I do this so the curiosity led it onto mindfulness I think and then that's how it's kind of come about (laughs) and that curious mind is everything and I think it really it's lovely that you share that with people because that's it's important to, for people to start thinking themselves about, yeah. I could be, you know, I could, what if I did this or what if I thought this way? Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So um, one of my um, last questions, I think it would be is, um, do you have uh, any sort of goals, aims for the next few years in terms of your creative processes? I don't see. That's like my whole, that's, cool. that's like my whole thing, right? Like I'm not, I think I want to just continue to do what I love, Mm -hmm. do more of what I love. And I think everyone should do more of what they love Yeah, because then you're, you're just a better human. You're, you're happier and you can be kinder to others and more generous. And because you're not stressed and, you know, if you're not doing what you love, right, you're going to be stressed and kind of uptight. Like I have been in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just going to keep I'm going to keep saying what if, like nothing's off the table. I'm just going that to keep is. expanding yeah. and I'm going to keep doing what I love. Mm. And the last and final question, any words of wisdom and encouragement that you'd like to leave us with today? And it could be literally anything that you want. Oh my goodness. Um. Oh, I know what I want to say. I believe that we all come here with our unique gifts. Mm-hmm. Nobody is like anyone else. Mm-hmm. And creator or source or God made you, whoever you believe, the universe, you came out of somewhere, right? Stardust. Yeah. <laughs> um, however your belief system is, I mm-hmm. I think that if you don't, if you don't shine, if you don't use what you've been given, and this comes from my experience, because I hit it, I call it, don't hide it under a bushel, right? Yeah. Let your, let your light shine. If you're not doing that, then it's a diss on the universe. It's a diss on, you know, whoever made you, whatever you believe. Mm -hmm. It's a diss, you know, that you, you were sent with these gifts. You're not using them. First of all, you're shorting the world, right? The world needs you. Um, So my, my thing is be who you are, be who you really are. And don't be afraid to be who you really are, because there's a reason you're here. There's a reason you're built the way you are. Um, So do it, you know, be who you are and share it because that's the whole point. You know, you came here as a unique bundle of creativity and talent and you should be who you are. Yeah, it's really important. I love that. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. And yeah, it's it's been great. It's so easy to talk to you and I'll see you probably on my podcast. (laughs) Most likely, most likely. It would be lovely. (laughs) Thank you so much. (laughs) 